Good morning everyone, it's Exa and welcome back to my channel. So as the title suggests, this is part two of things you can do to repair damaged heels um, and some bags. And this one, instead of focusing on things cobblers can do, like part one was, this one is going to focus on simple stuff you can do at home to repair them yourself and save some money. If you haven't watched part one on things cobblers can do, go ahead and click that link above me. It'll bring you right to it so you can see what other interesting ways that you can repair shoes that are believed to be unrepairable. And like I said, this video is going to focus on stuff that you can probably do by yourself at home. Um, but do keep in mind if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these things or don't have the right supplies or tools, any of the things mentioned in this video, a cobbler should also be able to do for you. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is simply cleaning the rubber soles and leather on some shoes. So I have a couple pair of white designer sneakers that are getting kind of dirty just from, you know, wearing them around town. So you can soak your laces in some bleach water and that will help whiten those back up, as well as using a bleach mixture to clean on the shoes itself. I'm actually using the spray that already exists um, instead of mixing my own just because that's easier, but you can just take bleach and mix it with one part bleach to three parts water to do that as well. Also to clean the insides of your shoes, you can take some acetone and a paper towel and just kind of wipe that on the inside. I wouldn't recommend doing this on the outside or any part of the shoe that you're going to see because it can slightly pull the pigment out of the leather that you are working on if it's a calfskin but it can be really helpful for cleaning those pesky stains out of the inside of your shoes. So this next trick is actually to clean those pesky scuff marks on the toes of heels. You can take some Angela Shoe Wax Polish in a color that closely matches the shoes you have, just wipe that on there and spread it on the toes of the shoes, and it will fill in and blend where those spots are missing. It'll also help make it shiny again, um, so it just kind of makes the spots disappear for the most part and make them look pretty much brand new. So the next thing is going to be dyeing leather products to make them a different color or a darker color. I tend to do this a lot on stuff that is faded from yellowing in the sun um, or things that have those really dark stains and scuffs that just don't want to come out. So you can dye vernice. Um, like this bag here and patent leathers as well. Um, you might just need to do a couple extra coats just to get it to soak in there fully um, and penetrate the surface to get into the material, um, whereas a calfskin you wouldn't need to do that as much. You can also do this on heels like I did for this pair and get really fun and creative. You can use multiple colors and kind of mix them together to create cool ombre effects or like um, a paint splatter effect. Um, you can do a lot with these different leather dyes. Now do keep in mind you should wear gloves whenever you're doing this process um, and put something down underneath them to protect um, the surface because this dye will get on everything and it will dye everything, but it does make your end result come out really great. So if you want to go from a darker color to a lighter color, you can instead use a leather paint instead of a leather dye. Obviously dyes make things darker and paints are going to be the only way that you can really get colors lighter. Do keep in mind that this is not going to work for a patent leather, but anything that is a soft calfskin leather or some suede, you can do the dye on top and you will probably need multiple coats to get the um, color that you want. Now you can also use this painting technique to just kind of refresh um, something with the same color that it was originally, like these Chanel shoes that I have here that were just kind of dingy and dirty on the bottom, so I mixed a couple colors of my Angelus leather paints together to get a pretty close match to what the original color was, and then just painted that on top of the whole shoe there, and it just makes them look nice and fresh and vibrant and new again. This can be a great technique to use if you already tried the cleaning method and it just didn't get the results that you were looking for. You can go ahead and then try this as a second option to get them back to their original selves. Also, if you're looking to completely change up the finish on your shoes, you can use glitter paints as well um, to make them sparkly and shimmery and just refresh as a completely new pair of shoes that doesn't look anything like the original that you started with. These glitter paints are great because they're super easy to use and mess free unlike loose glitter.
So talking about glitter and all things sparkle, another thing you can do is bedazzle or cover in crystals and rhinestones to any surface material shoe. Now these boots I'm working on here are a suede, so covering them works as well. Do keep in mind this takes forever. I think it took me a week to make these shoes, but man oh man, they came out so shimmery and sparkly and amazing. You can also do this on heels as well. So this is a pair of Versace heels that were a soft calfskin. And I covered those in glitter um, rhinestones as well, just to make them super sparkly and blingy, like the Palazzo heels that are all the rage these days. And if I do say so myself, these are one of the coolest pairs in my collection now. Um, they're just so sparkly and jaw-dropping. And lastly, obviously, you can also do this on a patent leather. Um, this is actually going to be one of the easier ways to spruce up a pair of patent leather heels because you're not going to be able to paint them if you want to change the color. So adding rhinestones um, or glitter on them would be kind of the only way that you're going to be able to get that lighter color on a patent leather heel. Um, also recommend, if you can, dye the base color closer to the color of your rhinestones before you apply them, and then it will just make the color that much brighter. And man oh man, do these Louboutins sparkle and shine, and they are so much brighter in person, I can't even capture the elegance on camera. So the next thing I'm going to cover is repainting the bottoms of soles where you've worn them and the colors just faded away from wear. So this is most prevalent on Louboutin soles because they do have that iconic red. You can buy this walk-on red paint from Angelus Paints and just put that all over the bottoms and once it dries it will match again perfectly. You can also do this for any other heels that might be a different color as well. You can use it to freshen up some black soles um, or ones with a nude or even some other ones that might have some funky other color. So adding protective soles is pretty easy. All you need to do is cut them out to shape, apply some shoe glue to both them and the shoe, and kind of stick them um, together. Be sure to check out the full video on me doing this that I posted last week. It will be linked above on the screen right now for you. Um, one little trick once you do that is to tie them with string. It's a really great way to make sure that the entire surface is going to be fully attached together. It works a lot better than just trying to use clamps or hold it in place for a while. So definitely break out the yarn. You can buy it at the dollar store. It's super cheap and affordable and this is a really easy way to protect the soles of your shoes or if you wear them outside a lot in the weather to make them um, super durable and not have to risk ruining them or getting your feet wet. It's really super easy and great process. So when you're all done, you now have a beautiful pair of boots that are ready to be worn outside and have nice protective rubber soles on the bottom. So this is actually a really easy process. We're just gonna take our little grabbers here, open them up and get just around the tip on the bottom here. And then we can kind of pinch it down and use this with leverage to pull them out. So now we will take our new tips. And if you do have multiple sizes, um, you do want to compare to the old one to make sure that it's going to be the right size to fit your shoe. They come in all sorts of different sizes. So now we can just line this one up straight with our hole. And just hammer it in. And once you have one shoe, then super easy, just repeat the process on the other one and you're done. So the next thing is to replace straps on bags that have either torn or are starting to crack apart, like this Burberry bag I have here. So as you can see, I did put um, end up putting shorter straps on these just because I wanted it to be more like a top handle, um, less like a shoulder bag. You can see I just stitched um, these new ones on. Just went and literally just went white through the side into the inside to hold the new handles in place. So 
So you really can add a crossbody strap to any bag or pouch. And the two methods I'm going to show you are the first one here, which is sewing on a D-ring to the side that you can then clip to. Now this is going to be great for soft fabrics, um, but if you're working with a leather, it can be kind of a pain to stitch through. So then you might want to go with our second option here, which is using a rivet. So we're just going to take our awl or whatever poking tool you have available to you, figure out where you want to put your hole, and poke it right through the bag. Then you can take the back piece of the screw um, for the rivet handle here, and you can push it through, and then screw on the front, and there you go. You are all done. You can attach your strap and wear your bag out in town. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that way you can find all of my new videos, and so you can go and watch through all of the other segments that were mentioned in this video for my other full tutorials on different designer shoe repairs. It is all in the playlist that will be listed at the end of this video. So until next time, I hope your day and your shoes are as beautiful as you are.